anyone following our channel lately, they will be seeing that we've been updating everyone on the conflict between Israel and Palestine as it affects everyone and mm. the entire world. Yes, so. yes, definitely. A lot's happened since we last did an update because we were focusing on what it could have mean if a conflict erupted, you know, in that region, what it means for logistics and the general economy. And since then, uh, it has gone from bad to worse, you know. So um, a lot of the stuff that we're hearing from the media now is that Israel has started their ground operations, which right. meaning that no longer just flying over and bombing uh, Gaza, but they're actually now making insertions with their troops on the ground, encircling Gaza City, going door to door or region to region, trying to fight Hamas. That's sort of a, a big sort of red line for all of the Arab nations, yeah. because a lot of them were saying, that if you guys are going on the ground, mm. we're going to join in. I feel like all the Arab countries are waiting for this move and it That's can start correct. a huge trickle effect. That's correct. That's correct. There's been way too much posturing. There's been a lot of signals being sent out by all of the Arab nations from Jordan to Oman to Turkey, even including Pakistan and so forth. Everybody's making these very stern statements. Erdogan has you know, come out with this massive protest for, uh, about the situation uh, with over a million you know, crowd, and that's right. massive. And he's literally gone to town on Israel. And the language is you know, confronting for a you know, head of a state to be this public and yeah, open. Yeah, that's not common. For so them. no, in the, you know, so he's, uh, if that's a sign of things to come, things are going to get very ugly. And we've got to keep in mind, you know, I've, I've been listening to and hearing uh, a lot of the commentators that are far more in tune with what's going on, mm. with the history and all of that. Yeah. They're, you know, the professional commentators. They're saying the leader of the Hezbollah up until this time hasn't really come out in public to make any announcements, mm. right? And that's because, you know, if he does that, more it, so each time he goes in front of the camera, if he's not careful, he might give away his position. If he gives oh. a position, Israel's going to track down and go boom. And it's fascinating. So yeah. which means that the reason why he hasn't come out saying that is because he's trying to limit the risk. Wow. Now, the fact that he's going to, so what, so what they were saying is that watch when this guy comes out and makes something because when he actually comes on camera and makes that announcement, it means that this is a one-shot thing, it's a serious thing, it's yeah. a clear signal, and that it's all in. And then now everyone's going to go for it, because so people are smart, yeah, especially yeah, with these yeah, days. Yeah. People can track very easily yeah. where someone is, so exactly. you know, as soon as he puts himself in front of a camera, he's making sure exactly. the target. Exactly, it's uh, it, a lot of the you know wiser folks that I've been listening to, they're, they're saying we are on the you know knife's edge yes. of the whole thing. It's just blowing up like a powder cake and it's everybody in the world is going to be, I mean, be impacted. I remember asking you in our previous episode if you felt like this had any potential end in the future and it's showing no, that this no, is going, no, this is just going to uh, get worse. And the sad reality is that, you know, um, they can't even bother calling, having a united stand on the ceasefire. Mm. Um, I was going to ask yeah, you about yeah, that, yeah. They're, they're talking about the ceasefire, the protesting for it. Do, it doesn't sound like this is going to happen. No, it, yeah. no, I don't think so. It's too much heat on both sides, too much um, animosity. Um, too much damage done at this and, stage. And it's too scattered. There are too many voices and it's not cohesive. Even though they say each side is cohesive, they're not. Everybody's got their own say. It's a chaos, it's, it's a free fall, it's a melee. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's very sad to see it unravel as such, right? So um, if something goes down, in the region, mm -hmm. I my my guess or in time, my, my suggestion is that Strait of Hormuz is going to be disrupted immediately. That's thirty percent of the global oil. It's huge. It's huge. Europe is going to be in dire straits. Even Global more so than, right. yeah. Now there has been a smarter commentator saying that you know the Arab nation slash Iran, they don't need to go into a kinetic conflict. What that mm. means is that kinetic meaning bombs, weapons, all that. They have a non-kinetic weapon that is super powerful, which is oil. You yeah. cut off that supply, you cut off the Strait of Hormuz, right? Not a single blood needs to be spilled. The world will feel it, the effects in short succession. Economic warfare. And, 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 and that's going to be more effective yeah. than trying to go up against Israel, the West, who's got far superior weapons and what have you. It's a battle that you're not going to get any clear winning, I mean winners or losers, more likely the West will win. And then what do you achieve? You're sort of back at square one. Right. 
You know what I mean? We're, we're hurting ourselves, we're hurting That's each right. other. It's and it's about time you pull on that oil lever because through that, the bottom, you know, it, where it hurts most is in the pocket. Yeah. Right? I don't care which country you come from. If it hurts your pocket, you're going to want to do something Definitely. about it. You can send your young population to go die in a war. It's not your it's skin easy. in the game. It's 100%. easy. Yeah. Right? As but it starts as affecting your pocket. pocket. Yes. Uh oh. Yes. Can't do that. Apparently, even the Dutch have sent warships there. Really? Wow. Why is Dutch sending any warships there? Do you think that inflames the situation or do you think that, you know... Definitely like inflames. <laughs> you, f for the love of anything that is holy, well, well, why? And then now, you know, China sent warships, six warships there as well. Wow. You know, this is going to impact our industry. This is going to be, I mean, impact us, yeah. um, our customers who trade in from that region, full stop. Uh, surcharges are already there, you know. The, the Israeli economy is already suffering. Mm -hmm. They went from negative three percent deficit of the GDP up to the uh, minus eight percent wow. now the, you know there are no winners there yeah. are no winners here and they're still evacuating I think from Rafa I think the crossing the Gaza they're opening Strip. up the crossing but only for Palestinians with a foreign passport yes I was looking at that An Australian yeah. Yeah. managed to get out but they had to leave the whole family behind yeah. just because of the Australian yeah. passport yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah. that's and, sad. and the sad reality is all of these nations so-called proud nations who protect their citizens, you know, but you've got your own citizens there. So you're sort of going, oh, well, you know what? It doesn't matter. They're so Palestinians still. Their, their, their passport doesn't really mean anything to us. We don't care about them. So the hypocrisy is there to be seen and it's not right. So that's the update, guys. Yeah. Oh, we just want to bring you up. Um, that's what's happening. We're watching this space closely. Disruptions are coming. Surcharges are coming and everybody will be impacted. Mm -hmm.